In this problem, we're tasked with finding the RMS voltages across a resistor, inductor, and capacitor. This is actually a fairly realistic example because we're given an RMS voltage and we're tasked with finding other RMS voltages. I say it's a realistic example because a voltmeter that an engineer might use to measure voltage along an AC line will tell you the RMS voltage. It won't tell you the amplitude. Since we're given the RMS at the source, I know that the amplitude should be 230 times the square root of 2 volts. I'm faced with a problem if I try to write the phase. Should I write 0 degrees? Should I write 45 degrees? Should I write 90 degrees? I don't know what phase to write because the phase wasn't given in the problem. We were only told the RMS voltage, or equivalently, we were told the amplitude of that sine wave. I've arbitrarily chosen 0 degrees, which means that all of the other sine waves in my circuit should be referenced from 0 degrees. But had I chosen 45 degrees or 80 degrees, I could have worked the problem the same way. It's just that all the other sine waves would have been referenced to the same phase. I only care about the RMS voltages here anyway. In previous videos, I used the amplitude of a sine wave when I expressed that sine wave in phasor form. There's actually no need to do that. You can use the RMS voltage instead. In fact, the IEC, or the International Electrotechnical Commission, has a standard that says that it should be the RMS voltage that one uses when they solve phasors. Since this problem tasks us with finding RMS voltages, there's no need to convert the RMS voltages to amplitudes and then back to RMS voltages again later. So let's instead keep everything in RMS. We just need to remember that we're using RMS voltages. I'm going to use voltage division to find the RMS voltages across the resistor, the inductor, and the capacitor. I'm using ZL and ZC to represent the impedances of the inductor or the capacitor respectively. The impedance of an inductor is J omega L and we're told that the frequency is 50 Hertz. So the impedance of the inductor here is 31.42 J ohms. The impedance of the capacitor is just 1 divided by J omega C. The impedance of this capacitor is negative 318.3 J ohms. That gives us enough information to find all of the complex voltages. I'm going to go ahead and convert these into polar form. The phase angles are somewhat meaningless in this problem because we're only interested in knowing the RMS voltages. I know that the voltage across the resistor has a phase difference from the source of 87.7 degrees, but I have no phase reference to the source to start with. I'm only interested in the RMS voltage in this problem. Let's just drop the phase. We now have the three RMS voltages and that completes the problem, but there are a couple of interesting things that I'd like to point out. First of all, you might notice that these three numbers don't add up to 230 volts. If we think about the Kirchhoff voltage law, we know that voltages of elements in series ought to add, but these RMS voltages don't add. If you take these three numbers and add them up, you'll get a number that's higher than 230 volts. The reason why RMS voltages don't add the same way DC voltages voltages do is because the magnitude of complex numbers don't add up the same way that real numbers do. The second interesting thing that I'd like to point out is that the capacitor voltage is 255 volts and the source voltage is only 230 volts. We ended up with a voltage inside the circuit that's higher than our source voltage. That's a bit strange, but it can happen sometimes when you have capacitors and inductors in AC circuits. So it's something that you'd want to be aware of. This video is part of an organized sequence where I explore various AC and switching circuits. If you enjoyed it, then you might consider following the channel's playlist to learn more about these types of circuits.